All right, we're out here. Linda's here, everybody's here. Um, so I'm gonna um, go over to Mr. Vitrano at this point for some instructions. Great, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, thank you very much, City Council, for the time you've committed to this process, not just today and yesterday, but throughout. Um, we appreciate working with you on it. Now it's, it's back to you. Um, you've heard the two candidates, and there really is no obviously right or wrong decision to be made at this point. You have three options. You have candidate one, candidate two, or instruct after you have that discussion, GovHR, to go back and, and proceed and continue with the search. Those are the three options that you have. Our hope this evening or afternoon would be that you do pick a preferred candidate. Um, the city attorney and I have talked a bit about um, a potential contract that could be provided to a preferred candidate, and East Point did some heavy lifting on a contract not too long ago. So those terms should be pretty well ironed out, and we would probably be ready if you instruct us at the end of this meeting um, to inform a candidate and make an offer to a candidate um, we would then ask them to quickly turn around so that potentially your Tuesday night meeting you could have a, a counter received. Um, uh, getting a ahead of myself a little bit, but your decision tonight is obviously between, first to discuss the two candidates. Um, I won't necessarily use any facilitation techniques. I think you guys have had a good relationship and, and really could talk this through. W the only advice that I will give and will always give an elected body is the sooner you can tell each other individually your preferred candidate, um, the better the process usually goes. Um, the, can the, the processes I've seen work least are those that everybody says that what they like about one, what they don't like about the other, what they like about the one, what they like about the other, and then eventually you kind of look at each other and is somebody going to say who their preferred candidate is. So um, early in the process, if you can expose your preferred candidate, if you have one, um, the better, because then you kind of know where each other stands and knows the points that you have to debate. So with that suggestion, um, I would like to turn it back to the mayor. Um, your, your goal is to find the best fit candidate for East Point. Um, there's no best candidate um, that would fit every community. Hopefully between these two, you find the best fit for your community. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and I'd be happy to, uh, to offer anything that, that you ask during your, your discussion process. So I thought maybe we'd um, follow the advice of our consultant because um, he does this a lot and he has the expertise in selecting him a candidate. But it's down to us to make the final selection. So I thought we would just go through. There's no sense in going through each individual um, candidate if all of us are on the same road. So let's start with Sarah. Um, so we put you on the spot <laughs> uh, for you to come across with who you would select um, first as your main, as your best choice, and and then we'll move down the line. And then we, if we have a difference between any of us, then we can discuss it in detail. If that's all right with you. Well, I believe that both candidates did a, a very well job, and I think they both would be an asset to have in the city of East Point. Um, they both have um, great personalities, and I think they have a lot to offer. But long term, I believe that I would have to think, you know, the future of East Point, I would recommend Joe Sov um, as my candidate of my choice because of the fact that I think with his financial background, and with where we are right now, um, that he would probably be long-term the best candidate for East Point. Michael. Sure. Um, very difficult for me, because I have, the, the, they're so different. Um, I, I think before we convened, I made the joke, or Sarah made the joke, if we could squish them together, they'd probably be the <laughs> perfect candidate. Um, so, I agree with the financial prowess of Joseph that I think that's invaluable. However, I'm going to say Natasha because I think um, we have a finance director and uh, it, it, I think he brings that strong financial thing, but maybe that's what we look for, you know, fill in the finance office rather than in the city manager. So I'm going to say Natasha. Monique. I agree with you. Um, Joseph has a lot of background in finance. Um, I did like that he knew the history of East Point, and he had the experiences that 
we are dealing with and how to take us to the next level. But with Natasha, um, I see her um, taking us to another level in another direction with different ideas. And I think um, she will be a good fit for East Point as far as a, a breath of fresh air, let me say. So I'll probably go with Natasha. Cardi. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think I agree with both of you, um, Ms. Owens, Mr. Kleinfeld. I'll have to go with Ms. Henderson. Uh, they both were good. They both uh, definitely had their different strengths. I think, like you said, Mr. Kleinfeld, uh, put them together, be a phenomenal <laughs> candidate. Um, but yeah, I think um, I think Ms. Henderson will do a great job for East Point. Um, I, I'd have to go with Sarah, um, and the reason is I thought um, Natasha had a lot of empty spaces in many of the questions that we asked related to her um, technical skills and her knowledge base. Um, I think some of the, the answers that she gave um, disagreed with some of the things that she had accomplished um, that I found on Google. In, and reviewing her resume and so forth. And um, I think that she doesn't have um, the necessary skills that we're going to have to employ in the near distant future with finance, as Mr. Um, Kleinfeld cited, um, as well as um, negotiations and management of department heads. Um, I. Um, I just disagree with it, and I think Mr. Sabota would be a better choice. So, um, can can I, uh, Madam Mayor, if I may, can I just ask uh, if anyone had some important feedback that, or you know, from questions that I might have missed, if there was anything really important that stood out that you think uh, is worth discussing? Well. I'm looking at maybe just um, based on some of the things that she said yesterday and today related to um, getting out into the community. I was a little bit taken back, um, wasn't taken back yesterday um, with her lack of knowledge about the city um, compared to Mr. Sabota. But I was today because she came in yesterday, she had an opportunity to reach out talk to employees, talk to residents, um, go to locations within the city to get a little bit more perspective of the city. But she didn't do that, and she stayed in Roseville, and she had an opportunity from last night until today. I don't expect anybody to travel here and then go out last night. But I was a little bit taken back when she said that she was scared, she was frightened to go out um, in the area, and I thought, all right, where does that come from? Because um, I thought that if, if you were afraid, you shouldn't be afraid to go out during the daytime, go to Cloverleaf, go to any other place. And when you're going out and exploring a city, I think that going out and having coffee in one place, lunch in another, just driving up and down. I remember when Mr. Um, um, Steve came by and came to us at night um, for his application and he said one of the things he had done was to drive up and down the neighborhoods and he was pleasantly surprised to see people out there mm -hmm. working in their yards, fixing their houses. He went out and explored what the houses look like with, and so forth. And I was a little bit disappointed that Natasha hadn't taken some step to become a little bit more familiar with the city. That was one of the things. Um, I actually left last night thinking either way. Um, but today that was one of the first things that kind of hit me. And I think for me also, um, that was one of the things that I noticed. I felt like she really didn't do a lot of like research on our city um, prior to this interview. Like she didn't really know uh, where, where Joe did a lot of homework. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one thing I felt like he was just more really um, focused on, you know, and that he would be really devoted to the city you know, and putting the time in that was necessary to be a successful city manager. Yeah, I think he, he clearly did more research on the city, um, but I think she's, she was more, and she used the word uh, passionate about the city. Um, felt like we asked him 
what was it, the first question, uh, yeah, the level of interest in the position, and he didn't really answer it. I, I, I kind of thought he said he'd do a very good job, but I think he, he didn't seem like he wanted to get uh, passionate about the city. He'll just come solve problems. He'd do it next door, and I think he'd do a good job at that, but uh, I like her level of uh, passion for what she is, was hopefully about to do. So, Michael, there was another question that was kind of um, set me, made, made my mind up was number three on round two questions was, please describe the process you would follow to comprehensively evaluate the current operations of the city and to develop innovative um, improvements. And um, that was a question that Monique asked and then she did a good job in asking the questions. And what she replied, what Natasha replied was to check the flow charts to look at policies and procedures, um, and that was essentially it. And yet, when you asked Mr. Sabota that question, he would he said um, to review the charter, to look at the operations, the procedures, um, communications. Um, he would work with um, the counties, meet with the chamber review the finances, look and evaluate the services provided, quantify the cost, um, look at unused revenue, and so forth. So he had a number of positive ideas for how he could um, effectuate the same thing. So I thought his knowledge base related to that was much better and more comprehensive. Uh, so I, I agree. Like I said, both of them were really good. Natasha just had, uh, to me, uh, like I said, breath of fresh air where, well, um, Joseph, he did apply um, with the city of East Point before, so he would be more knowledgeable on a lot of things. When you're, so he's, he's been studying East Point for what, since last year maybe? So he would have a, a lot more information, but I still respect the fact that he did his homework, he knew the problems that we faced, he knew um, how to take us to the next level if we, those uh, problems arose again. But he didn't talk a lot about, to me, uh, community involvement as much. But you know, he was good on the financial part of it. Like when she said bring in like water parks and um, stepping outside the realm of Macomb County to get resources and to do things. That's kind of you know a lot of things that point out to me. Sarah. Well, you know, like I said before, I, I believe that Natasha um, was very good with, when I was watching her earlier kind of mingle with staff, communicate with the staff and things like that, I thought she seemed to, um, that she would probably get, a, get along very well with everyone that works here. Um, but at the same time, my concern was I do feel like uh, Joseph may be a better leader instead of a friend when it comes to um, the employees at City Hall. Here's, here's what I would think. I think that Natasha would be good after a year here. And we're looking at the time Randy, I don't know where he's hiding, but Randy is gonna be leaving within the next year. I think she would make an excellent assistant city manager to move into the city manager position at some time in the future. I just don't think that she has the necessary um, public administration skills that this city needs. Um, I don't see any record at all. Um, she mentioned just a little bit about negotiations, but we all know that the city manager is going to be the one that's going to be involved in negotiations, and we will have negotiations coming up. I'm not sure, I didn't pick up at all that she's got any experience with some really rather tough negotiations. Were you speaking about Ultimus or Blum? Randy Ultimus. Okay. Um, he's not, not Mr. Blum, but Mr. Blum um, also needs some help with finance and we've approved in the budget um, for an assistant finance director, but um, we don't have it yet. And we need it. We need it. And we need somebody to really look at Smorsa 
And what's going to happen to us? Because SMORSA is not going to provide, um, it's less and less, and we think 22 years, but our expenses are getting more and more, and it's not going to last all that 22 years. Because some of that money has got to be taken out of the um, general fund at some point in time in the very near future. She did negotiate seven CBAs in uh, Muskegon Heights, according to her resume. I know we didn't talk about it. Today. You really need, she's got it in her resume, but when you read, read Google and what happened within the city of um, Muskegon Heights, it doesn't all quite match. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like you said, Mayor, she did have time, like you, I agree, to um, go around the city and see how the, the city is. And when she said the, the, you know, the fear part, well, she is a lady here on her own, but at the same time, this is a city you're gonna be managing. You should have some type of, you know, feeling for the city if you're gonna be and even if you didn't do it, have time to do the research, you still had time to do a little drive around and get a feel of, you know, the community in itself. So I totally agree with that. And we asked questions about um, economic development. And I think that we asked a question about economic development last night. So it just seems to me, Cardi, if you were, if this was you interviewing and you had a question given to you last night, I'll bet you, you would have been out first thing this morning at six o'clock, driving up and down, looking at the city and trying to figure out what type of economic development do they already have? Because that's one of the things that you, a city manager is really important for, is economic development, and in this case, redevelopment. Mm -hmm. So some of her questions, answers related to economic development, I think just didn't match. Mm -hmm. um, appropriately with what our needs are. Okay. I did like the mm -hmm. answer about the pool. <laughs> the water park. Yeah, water yeah. Park. about yeah. the water park. <laughs> all right. How can we I mean, I, I was, same, uh, I was really a razor thin line between the two. Was there, mm -hmm. did you guys feel like she said anything that was, um, really pulled you to her because uh, Cardi I thought for sure the uh, techno technology upgrade and stuff all that he talked about you, you <laughs> would love that. I was a little yeah. excited well, about yeah. that personally. <laughs> but I was really impressed with what Sabota was saying today about all these things because these are exactly the things that council's been talking about a while and I really really liked what he was saying about improving communications with residents because I think that's critical right now and there are a lot of things that he came forward with that even Cardi hasn't said before, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think about getting residents or, you know, other folks maybe not involved with the city right now. I think she'll go out and come to community events. Didn't seem like Mr. Spoto was as, has as much done that before. Uh, Oh. Well, for some of my research, he, I think he has. He was, oh, yeah. I, from looking up some news articles that he was in and comments he had made, mm -hmm. I think that he has gone out and done things I th in I think the communities he's worked in the past. Absolutely, especially in Pontiac. And um, the background that he has, um, even at a young age, when he was over in Hamtramck, um, we need somebody that really can work on some of the issues related to water and sewer and drainage, those are gonna be key important issues and he's got some background in that. Um, she said that she ran that water um, treatment center up there. There's some articles there that question whether she was the one that was running it and what type of problems they ran into that weren't resolved. Mm -hmm. The other thing is she came from Muskegon Heights and do you know Muskegon Heights today has the number one crime rate in the state of Michigan? Number one crime rate. And while she was there, and I'm sure this was economically induced, but she laid off nine police officers. Mm -hmm. So you've been around, Cardi, when we had to really look at our economic status and where we were bound and determined that we weren't gonna lay off police officers, that we would do everything possible to maintain as much as we could with our police and fire force. 
Those are the critical issues. But if you're number one crime rate, I think you'd have to do all kinds of other things besides eliminating police department. Okay. I don't know any details about that. Can I, can I ask this? Because I feel like yeah. over here the, there's strong opinions, <laughs> like and over here I'm not, I'm not sure if, and like I said, I'm sort of on the fence. So, um, I mean, I guess Councilman uh, DeMonico and Councilwoman Owens, did you guys feel really strongly about Natasha, or did you, are you sort of like they were both good candidates? Well, I feel, well, I agree with you when you said you chose, you like both, and I said I like both too, and I named their strengths in each other, in both of them. Um, I think Mr. DeMonico just chose Natasha and um, the mayor and councilwoman Lucido chose Joseph. I think me and you were the only two that were. We're sitting in the middle <laughs> of the <week. laughs> Yeah, I think we were the only ones that like, we like both, I so. the table this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't, I, I think they're both very solid management individuals, but I, I definitely would pick uh, Ms. Henderson over Mr. Sabota for sure. It wasn't I wasn't flipping a coin or anything. I kind of liked. I, I know we've talked to probably about it a bit before the uh, working with department heads in different departments, and you know he he joked about having a once a week meeting, except maybe during Christmas time. But I think um, I like a lot where. Uh, Ms. Henderson was going with the project management software because even I've done this personally at work we we used to our team used to meet once a week and then eventually it became everyone's just telling each other what they've been doing but we have a system where we could go look up what each other's doing you don't want to just come back and say oh I got a couple steps further and then we spend a couple hours doing that I think she'd analyze what's the best to do so everyone all the department heads aren't just getting together just to say this is what I've done today or in this week and then next week you're just a couple steps further I think uh, she'd do a better job like managing things that way well but project management if you're if you're talking project you're saying one individual project and so if you have one specific project that you're looking at maybe the establishment of what do you call that mr. cotton something Mondays Long Mondays. Um, so that takes multiple departments, but if he coins the topic and then you put it into project management, that's the type of, that's one individual project. But I think there's no way at all in this city that you can get by without um, doing department meetings on a weekly basis. I think our, our um, department heads found that out in the past year, that it's, it's very important for you to see your face of the other department heads, right, Mary? For how long did it go before you saw another department head? Yeah. And the librarian was off in limbo, sitting over there on Oak Street for a while, and she didn't. So department meetings on a routine basis, I think, are critical. If you want to use that project management, and I don't remember who makes that, I've used it over and over and over again. I think it's very practical and an interdepartmental, and um, mm -hmm. it's a key tool but it's not project management per se. It's not department management. I do have to agree with the mayor. I think that the weekly meetings are important. I think that is a necessity because I think that they need to communicate with each other and also at that time, it gives them the opportunity to bounce ideas off of each other. If you know they are stuck in a situation or if they have an idea and they just wanna know if it's good, then you're not just talking to one person. You're kind of, can, you know, that gives them the opportunity just to work together. So there are two other th things that I have to say about Mr. Sabota. I really felt that he was right on top of some of our major issues. When he was talking about his experience with animal control, here we are, we're about to go into the county, and we need that experience. And what they were able to accomplish in Oakland County may not be what we are able to accomplish in, in Macomb County, but at least he's been through that, and so, we never even stopped to think, I don't think, that we needed to change our animal ordinances. And maybe we don't, but that was the perception that I recognized that he was a little bit further ahead of us on that. 
The other key thing right now is pensions. Randy's sitting over there beating his head against the wall trying to figure out how we're going to maintain our pension obligations, not this year, not, not next year, but year three and year five. And for somebody to have already gone through pensions and what you can do with it, and maybe how you can bond with it, despite what the state says about your bond rating, I, th I think that that is something that we really, really need to have. The fact that this man has worked with the Michigan Department of Treasury over and over and over again as an emergency manager and working under Schimmel, that's as much as an advantage as the other thing where he was talking about with HUD. Um, having been in the White House this last week, I know there's something called opportunity zones that are going to be coming and there's no reason why the city of East Point can't have an opportunity zone and he's the one that can make that happen because of his experience with HUD and his connections with the state treasury. So I think, I think East Point could really use somebody that has his experience and his skills. Transportation besides. Transportation? And water rates. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think the reason, uh, there were a couple of things he said today which um, w was why I leaned just a little bit more towards Natasha. And um, he seems to have, I think, the mindset of a finance director where his recommendations will be based on um, the bottom line, and I'm not sure that uh, he would recognize the big picture of uh, goals that might, maybe it's not the smartest way to spend money, but you need to invest in creative ideas to kind of like spur community involvement. Um, you know, when I, I asked about the budget amendment thing, and I think he had a very intelligent answer, um, but his answer was, I was able to do all that without a budget amendment and he seemed, pre you know, he was happy to not have to go to the legislative body. Um, in contrast, I know yesterday when we asked Natasha um, about her role when she, she could, uh, from authority through the state, override local control, she really felt the need to bring in those, those voices and avoid that. And I think they're very different in that sense. Mm. I, I think he was just saying not a line item specific. Randy's there. Randy, what did you get? I, I got the idea that he was talking about line items could be changed as long as the basic budget remains the same. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what his reference was, getting a budget that allowed him to move money around. Um, that kind of threw me. Because we, I mean, our budgets are approved at a departmental level, so I can't move it from assessing to accounting to and I don't think that's what he was talking about. Yeah, I think he was just talking about line items within departments. And we yeah. don't approve the budget at a line item level, so if we go over on one line and under on the other, we're still good. Um, the key is we can't spend more than we have a, a budget for by the end of the year. Um, whether that's done through a budget amendment to increase the allowable expenditure, spending less than was previously approved, it doesn't matter to the state. We just can't spend more than it has been approved. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I was a little confused at what he was talking about. I, I think it was just a line item, but still staying within the budget. Because you're not really changing the budget. We, we change the amendments if we're making major changes. Well, Mike, I, I think, yeah, it, what I think threw me off on his answer for that was that he said everything flows through finance, and I think we've got our new uh, Arts and Cultural Commission that's probably Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission, can't forget the all of the letters in that, um, that isn't really going to spend any money and hopefully has a huge impact on the uh, the city, or at least, you know, not in the short term, maybe eventually, but, you know, it, like it doesn't, it's not just going right through the finance department and we get out on the other side yeah. something well great. i don't i don't know it might um eventually i think they want to be able to spend some money but sure yeah. <laughs> but, but I, we were very clear to put a thousand dollars in the budget for you to spend 
Right, and I'd hope it makes much more than a thousand dollars worth of you know uh, progress. Th that that's the part I was. I mean, I, I don't know what your future plans are, all of you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, same thing for like beautification. We do the landscape awards and all that, and we barely spend. I'm sure we don't even hit the thousand. You know, people just get reimbursed for donuts and food and stuff, and I think it's got a good impact. It's something very positive the city uh, can do, especially when there is so much negative, like the candidate you know had mentioned tonight. I know that it was preferred that we make a choice tonight. I don't know if, if I'd like kind of like ideally, personally anyways, I think it'd be great if we all kind of ended up on the same page. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen tonight. <laughs> I don't so. think so. Really? I kind of, so yeah, I thought we would be out of the gate, anymore. maybe. That's what I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Mike, though. Yeah, it'd be nice if we somehow all, <laughs> all agreed. James, would you have any suggestion on, I don't know, if you've witnessed, like, oh, well, they kind of really look at a, well, it's like still a skull. majority, so. Right. You, you have, op I mean, your two options are you call a question now and, and take a vote and accept what it is. You know, there's nothing to say that this evening must be when you pick your preferred candidate uh, either. You know, certainly there's been times when I've been with clients and they say, you know, we have a meeting in a few days. We want to think through it when there, there's two close candidates. And you call the question on, on whenever your next meeting is or a special meeting. So those are really your two options. So um, it's not. When we hired um, Darwin Parks, it was a 3-2. And look where that got us. I'm completely fine with, <laughs> with either waiting till Tuesday, because we do have a meeting on Tuesday to make this decision, or voting tonight. Well, if you wait until Tuesday, it'll be a 3-1. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be here Tuesday either. I'll be out of town. One. So if I'm not here Tuesday, <laughs> then we won't have the vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, Ryan has some. Well, we can always I, wait and do deliberations on the second council meeting. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm hesitant. I don't really want to call it because I I just I'm not 100% sold one way, and I feel like. Uh, I, I just I'm not prepared to say Natasha and then do a three to two, especially if Councilman Owens sort of feels like me, where it's like it's really close. I'm not really sure yet. Okay, well, Madam Mayor, um, perhaps uh, Councilmember Kleinfeld, uh, because this meeting was recorded, would you want to perhaps watch? Uh, yes, I, I was planning the on that. Entire, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that would be smart. So when will we get together again? I will not be at the October, the second meeting in October, so we would have to schedule a special meeting. Yeah, because of course Tuesday wouldn't work either since well, I mean, only three of two, us. Well, two members gone on Tuesday. Right, so that wouldn't be a very fruitful discussion. Right. Uh, if How about scheduling a second meeting the third week of October? Will you be mm -hmm. gone then? I, yeah, that seems... I, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about Waiting your surgery is yeah. on the first. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it could be appropriate for us to think about it and possibly have a meeting on like Saturday morning? I know that's annoying. I'm going to be out of town. That. I'm going to be out of town this weekend. So the only time I'd be able to do it is Sunday evening. I can't do it then because we'd have to. Yeah. I'm going to be a couple days away. It, well, it could be tomorrow for me as well. I can do tomorrow. When do you leave, Sarah? I leave tomorrow at 11 o'clock. A.M.? Yes. So I could be here in the morning if you wanted to come back in the morning and do it. I can do at it in the morning. 9.30? Yeah. Which, sorry. Madam Mayor, would you, I mean, would that be in? Tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. In the morning is fine. I have um, some cog meeting um, after that, all afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, tomorrow morning. So, what do you, so. yeah, I know. Yeah. Make it a true. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll make it make it work <laughs> you're at work huh no I said I guess I'll make it work but I mean I normally would be but 
Nine thirty tomorrow. We said, right? Is that? Um, I, members of council, I will not be available. I have court at eight o'clock, and then I have to be at a delay at hearing at nine o'clock. Okay. So I probably would not be available till around ten thirty tomorrow morning. Actually, I, that's not I think eighteen we need, hours from now anyway. I think we need to focus maybe on the third week of October. That's a. I'm worried about losing away. a potential yeah. candidate yeah. by waiting that long. Yeah. yeah. Um, Madam Mayor. Uh, he, your term is up. <laughs> Coming up. Just hire you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm losing <laughs> it. Don't forget. Well, the longer you take time, the more I'm here. Okay. There we go. She wants so, you for three more weeks. <laughs> Adjourning to a time certain. Yes. There is another another point to discuss with Natasha as well, is that she won her appeal in court, so she's going to be going back to trial. Yeah, I, we have no, no, um, nothing that we know that you would lose a candidate, but Ryan's right, the longer it goes, the more likely it is to, to lose candidate. But you need to find a, a process that you're comfortable with. Um, I'm not sure if it was made clear, but the city attorney would, would have to give us an opinion on adjourning to a time certain if you chose to do it, you know, between now and, and a day or two from now. Um, and not be able to advertise for your 18 hours. It is it is an option. Even then, we could still do, do tomorrow it? afternoon mm -hmm. if the council members were available. Yeah, when, when are you leaving? Do it tomorrow to afternoon. No, I'm not available. Oh, okay. I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. Yes. Oh, okay. um, uh, I I mean, if if we're able to meet in the morning, mm -hmm. I, no offense, Rich, if you're not there, I think it'll be. That's <laughs> fine. If right. we're just kind of really just voting to make a choice on this, um, it's not 18 hours. Well, I think we can recess instead of adjourning. post a new, yeah, instead of adjourning. I think we still have to post a notice of the meeting. I think we still have to comply. We could do the, the 18 hours. Where does that put us if we adjourn to tomorrow? Um, is, is everyone available at noon tomorrow? I am no. not. not. Well, okay. Let me let me ask this. Sorry, <laughs> I know we're just kind of like uh, it's not a very structured conversation. Um, I'm available the second week of October if we wanted to schedule a special meeting that week, but we don't. We're not sure on how Suzanne is going to be with her recovery. Oh, Suzanne will be on her scooter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess my my. I think I would be more inclined because I think there's more support and enthusiasm for Joseph Sabota. Um, I think there's probably, as in general from the entire council, more support for him than there really is for Natasha. Um, although I think I like both of them. So um, if, we, if we're going to do majority and pick tonight, I think I could vote for him. I don't think I would be ready to vote for Natasha. Understanding that I did say Natasha when we first went around, so I know. <laughs> but uh, that wasn't, I really felt good about both of them. So I kind of felt, uh, you know, I was trying to follow the process to make it easier. 
I, I would be curious to know what you think, uh, Ms. Owens. Um, hearing, well, as, a, as council members, we do supposed to brainstorm what we think, and that's what I like about us because we listen to what everyone says. And listening to a lot of things that the mayor was saying about um, her not going around the community and looking past that her um, old city, that high, you know, high crime rate and um, getting rid of police officers. And you guys know that's my whole stance, police officer and safety. And to um, have a city that's left and have a high crime rate, which she has no control over, but you know, some of the statistics that we've heard, and uh, I'm glad that you did that extra research hearing that. It does lean me more towards Mr. Uh, Joseph Slada. Um, and so that would be who um, I would go to more towards. But I, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, honestly, this highest crime rate in the whole state, I don't, uh, how are we supposed to, um, I, I can't confirm that now, right now. Um, and you want me to tell you what year? I have all the stats. Uh, well, okay, I, but I, 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 I think this is not, uh, I personally think that is not fair to the, uh, the candidate. I don't, I don't think the crime rate alone is absolutely the most important thing. I think it's the fact that you had to have state police come in and manage the city police department. Um, and Why didn't, didn't you ask her about these things? I like, didn't ask her about. Right. Well, can uh, I know that you're concerned about that, um, Cardi, uh, Monique? Is that is that like a decision point for you do you feel because for me I, I that's the not crime my rate thing that's is not, not, that's not a decision point. point well so. that's important to me don't get me wrong um that's important to me uh letting go of police and things like that you guys know i talk about that um in general all the time and i was already in the middle of i i like joseph sabata when he applied last time i liked him this time he was my top choice anyway but then um you know, when I listen to Natasha, I like a lot of her ideas as well. So it's not like I'm, I was, I was already closer to Joseph Sabata, but like I said with Natasha, I like a lot of her ideas where um, Joseph seems like he uh, sticks to the same old plan and getting things done. I see Natasha um, outside that box trying to get things done with um, not going with the norm. So that's what I liked about her. But um, like I said, I always liked Joseph in the beginning, and some of the things that I heard, not just about uh, with Natasha talking, you know, not you know going around the city and things like that. Because truthfully, when you're going to apply for a city and you're over a city, you have to do your research. She didn't come with research. Um, she, uh, Mr. Joseph, backed his research. He knew what we were going through. He experienced those, go you know, things that we've been through, and um, he had the resources for the things that we may go through or going through. So when he came yesterday, I was impressed. When he came up here today, I was impressed. When I read his resume last year and before the interview, I was impressed. So um, he's, he's, a, he's impressionable. But like I said, with Natasha, I just liked, I just felt like she was a breath of fresh air as far as you know, bringing new ideas to the city. Can I comment on that? I, I guess I don't know when, I, I mean, so he lives, Somewhat in the area, she lives out of state. I don't know about when has he been around the city. I don't think he went driving around the city. He was at our last right? council meeting. Well, he yeah, but like she's she wasn't in Michigan at that time. So I I think I mean he did clearly come more prepared about the background of East Point than she did. But I think which I would have rather preferred she had. But overall, I think with all the other things we've talked about, I, I, that's why I like Natasha more. Yeah, but when you got someone at the end of the interview give you um, money. <laughs> Actually, I emailed, I emailed that <laughs> same thing. Ideas. I'm not gonna lie that he hit it at the end of the uh, interview. I, I mean, yeah. he, hit it, he hit it at the end. He, he has, it seemed like he's already working for the city of East Point and he doesn't even have the job. That's impressive to me to to find resolutions to a place where you don't even work at. That's impressive to me. Or 
I do know, agree, people. Monique. I feel like he's already like trying to come up with ideas, and he doesn't even have the job yet yeah. to, on how to help East Point. Yeah. I think Mr. DeMonico was about to say that. I think Steve Vita sent out an article on the, like, contacting the, the state for yeah, lost. Yeah, the unclaimed property or something. I yeah. just I sent that to Mr. Cotton. Um, um, but uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he... So I did oh, bring I, the, I did bring that information. What the piece of paper that he gave me last night was unclaimed property, and I did have Randy Blum review it, and I did ask him to send um, information back to you on each of the individual items. But there were a number of items in there um, that Randy said this morning were mostly real estate, and they're very difficult to get because you have to have a lot number, and it's just stated um, in the Treasury records that it was a real estate or tax or something. So it takes a lot of time, which you don't necessarily always have. That's true. Holland did follow up on that. That was my suggestion based on those attempts keeping up with what they have to do. Um, yeah, it's a claim. $260. <laughs> <laughs> for some variety of reasons. There were, there were a few things when he reviewed it quickly this morning that he thought maybe we could get a little bit um, some of it was just a closed account and somebody didn't take all their money out or something like that. So, so he was going to review it. All right, so. Um, I, I, I personally, if I may, um, <laughs> given, uh, given the conversation tonight, I, I'm comfortable casting a vote to first proceed with Mr. Sabota, um, keeping in mind that if that doesn't work out, I think Natasha was an excellent okay. second candidate. So is that all right with you, Mike? Yes, I support that. And Mr. DeMonico, you still want your opinion? Yeah, you're sure about that? You just... <laughs> I, I feel good about both the candidates, and I think, um, I, I mean, sort of the debate here uh, is really what I was soaking in, kind of like the, the input of what other council members thought. So um, I, do, I do think after the discussion that I, I would be happy with Mr. Svoboda. But you wouldn't want to vote on, or you didn't want to vote on the Yeah, that Natasha was my thing, is I, I, wasn't, I wasn't confident enough to vote for Natasha, but I feel confident enough to vote for Mr. Svoboda. And I know that I was on that thin line, but um, that, that's how I feel about it. So I, I could support him, but I would need more time to, to evaluate how I feel on um, the th of whether I thought the things that I liked about her really carried enough weight to, to um, overshadow the, the imp like the preparedness and the information he brought, um, not just today but also yesterday because it was notable, um, which is more what I'm going off of is sort of my interviews yesterday. Well, if, can I make a few more comments? <laughs> Um, the uh, one thing at the at the end we had, well not at the end I guess because we had like three sets of questions. Um, do you have any questions for us? He um, Nat Natasha I thought had some very good questions. What do you want in the city manager? And we all went around and talked about that. And then what's what's your biggest issue in the city? When we asked Mr. Sabota, he he. He didn't have any questions prepared and then came up with one off the top of his head. I think he's got a lot. I, I think he knows how to get things done, but is not thinking uh, broad terms in future of the city, like uh, uh, creative things that we could do. Uh, like I said, I think she was much more passionate. And maybe he can solve some things we have going on, but then you know, he wanted our written goals for it like he he wasn't just coming up with some on his own i felt like natasha will help us think brainstorm come up with some things too um so just in terms of that i think he'll i mean i think he would get things done but in terms of doing new things or uh, things like that i don't think he'll bring as much to the table as natasha would i think she would bring a lot to the table in that regard I agree a lot with that, but in order to make the, have, make things happen, you gotta have money. And I think um, he has a lot of experience in how to solve a lot of problems with money issues. And so. I totally agree with that comment. 
in order to make anything happen, and you're talking about redevelopment, you're talking about infrastructure, you're talking about roads, the bottom line is that dollar sign. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I understand what you were saying, and I, I think I agree with that specific quality um, th that I liked it with Natasha, but I think that just by doing the brainstorming sessions like we did kind of for the first time this year, um, I'm not worried about that stalling because I think um, you know, we'll be the ones kind of coming up with ideas. And I think it's okay if we're more like the source of pushing changes um, and if the city manager's more just acting at the direction of, of council. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sabota also said, this is the first time we've ever gotten this kind of a comment, that he's gonna go to the Chamber of Commerce on a monthly basis and meet with business leaders. I think that that is really a good idea. I don't, I don't care whether East Point, Roseville, and Frazier are now together in the chamber. There's all kinds of ideas that come up on a monthly basis, and I think it, that's a really good idea. But also within the DDA, and there's some other ideas, and I would bet that he's gonna show face in the planning um, commission to see what's happening in there. And I would assume a close relationship as well with Mary, wherever she went. So should we vote? Yes. Are we um, ready? I don't, I think I didn't make an official motion. Um, should there be a contingency for a second candidate or should we just vote on choice number one? Um, you, you certainly have that choice and I, I can give you two different motions to choose from and the first would be to make a motion to offer the position to a candidate and authorize the city attorney and search firm to make an offer um, consistent with the terms presented to the last candidate when you did the search process. And you can end the motion there or you can end and uh, authorize a second ca choice candidate of whoever if the first can if terms can't be brought with the first candidate. Um, you certainly can do that this evening or do that at some point in the future when um, if you can't come to terms. I do think it's, it's good if, if you can get a majority vote to actually make that second candidate offer at the same time because I think that expresses to both candidates, particularly your second candidate, that there is interest if it doesn't work with that first candidate and, and to stay, on, um, to, to stay uh, engaged. Uh, but that certainly is, is your, your option in that motion. I've seen it done both ways. Um, Sorry, say that the two... A motion with two, both options, say that again? That you would make a motion to offer the position to a candidate and authorize the city attorney and I to engage in that candidate with an offer. Um, you would also, you could also make a motion either following that motion um, that you have interest in the second candidate if the, if the first candidate, um, if you cannot come to terms with that first candidate, um, that you are interested in that second candidate um, as a, a, an alternative option if you can't come to terms. As opposed to just doing that if it did fall through? Correct. Just, all right, because I, I think we all just agree Just to that, express that Both that candidates interest. are, are good. Okay. You know, yeah. I, you know there's, there wasn't a just, you know, definite like, no, no one likes one of them, you know? I, right. So I, th I would I'd be okay with making both motions. I, I will motion to, um, Authorize an offer to be made to, should I say just engage in negotiations because I don't think we've sure. settled on and, and maybe look at the contract on Tuesday. So um, I will move to uh, authorize the city manager um, and GovHR to engage in negotiations with Joseph Sabota and in the event that he formally um, withdraws or declines uh, to then engage in negotiations with Natasha Henderson. Support? I was going to get a point I, I, clarification. Yeah, you'd have to oh. say the city attorney, so that would be. Sorry. Uh, what did I say? You said city uh. manager. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. <laughs> city, city attorney and gov HR. I knew what you meant. Support. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please call the roll. Board member Kleinfeld? Yes. Board member Lucido? Yes. Board member Owens? Yes. Board member DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Um, the one other thing, I think we need a, a motion to have our city manager um, negotiate with the last contract that we, or the contract that we had with our last city manager, 
the contract we worked out. I have a copy right here. For our last applicant. Um, so how would you like to word that? Well, I was. You want to review that? Because that had a lot about moving in it. But yeah, that's if we eliminate it. We so, I, mean, I think the, the, that contract was okay if we eliminated that moving. Okay. Is the salary the same thing? Is the salary within what was posted? It was 115, right? Uh, in the in the document that I have, it was 117.5. It's in the range. So is that that's within the posted amount? What do we do? 110 to 125, I think, in the right. posting. <clears throat> it is within the range. Okay. So do we need another motion related to it? Because he did include the negotiations in it. I, I'm comfortable with the direction yeah. if the city attorney is. Okay. I, I can make those changes now. Is it the council's uh, preference then to have that proposed uh, contract then brought before uh, with, on next Tuesday's agenda? You can email it to both Sarah and I and we can respond. Okay. Or it's Monique that's going no, to yeah, be I'll be here yeah. on Tuesday. Uh -huh. okay. in, yeah. in advance of Tuesday's meeting? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. When do you have it ready? Will you have it ready um, tomorrow or? Um, I can have it ready tomorrow. Okay. Yes. But we need Thank you. we need to know whether Mr. Sabota is accepting that or because we've already essentially approved that contract, correct? Um, well, we what, the reason I said negotiation is because we hadn't formally voted on what contract we were offering. Um, I can put, I can make those changes and circulate to the council. The by taking tomorrow. out moving yes. expenses. Um, and other than that, I think mostly it was the same as Steve's prior contract, I believe. Very similar. Yeah, we made some changes. There were two or three smaller changes. Just send it to us and then we can send it back to you. Um, that my concern is just uh, if he wants to. It won't have be something for us to approve on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, you know, I, maybe you can just informally reach out and say this is what it looks like we're going to offer, but they have not officially extended right. this yeah. offer. Yeah. If, if I may, I think to circulate it to you and to circulate it to the candidate with the caveat that this is the form they are planning to review on Tuesday. If you have any significant um, requests or changes, to let us know so those can be brought with you Tuesday, along with the draft agreement, and you can both choose to take action on those and make any changes to the draft because the city attorney and I will inform him this this has not been formally offered by city council this is just the draft that we're working on and it keeps your process going yeah and if we do it that way we don't need a motion I don't believe correct right. okay all right are we ready mayor and council reports this is I do want to uh, thank both candidates for applying and for coming out and going through the interview process. Um, it was very interesting meeting both of them. I think they both had some really great ideas. I think they were both outstanding candidates. But I am excited to um, go ahead with Mr. Sabota. I do believe he's going to be a huge asset to the city. Um, I do believe Natasha could have brought um, many great ideas um, also. But with that said, I'm, I think we are happy with what we decided tonight. Mr. Kleinfeld. Um, I would like to reiterate thank you to the candidates for coming out. Um, felt great about both of them. And I think we're in a really good position and, and the city's going to be moving forward um, with some good leadership. So, uh, and I appreciate the deliberation from council kind of <laughs> painfully getting to what we wanted to do. Um, so thank you, everyone, and thank you, GovHR. Ms. Owens. Yes, I want to first thank GovHR for all the hard work and also both candidates for coming. They were, both of them were amazing. Again, like um, Mayor Pro Tem said, if we could have put both of them together, that would be great. Or if we could have just hired Mr. Cotton, it would have been easier. <laughs> but we could have did that. So um, even going forward, I do want to thank Mr. Cotton for all the work he's done. Um, you did an exceptional job. You listened to each council member. Um, and you have you bring your ideas and hopefully we can take that to the next city manager So I want to thank you. I want to thank the staff that came and um, Sat with us and listened and the people that commented and came out that was awesome that that shows people um, Outside of East Point and in East Point that who we choose to run the city is important to us and who we choose And so again, thanks to both of the candidates and I can't wait to see what Mr. Uh, Sabata uh, brings to the team 
Mr. DeMonaco. All right, thanks. Yep. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Cotton, for um, being interim up to this point and for a few more weeks, at least. <laughs> And uh, thanks everyone for coming out in the audience and sharing. I mean, most of them are gone now, but uh, <laughs> yeah. thanks for coming out and giving your feedback. And um, uh, it helped out, I think, with our discussion. Uh, and yeah, look forward to going from here. Um, I would like to thank, um, in particular, HR. And James, you've done a great job um, with a lot of the, the background work. Um, I think you were very well organized and follow through. And, we were able to select two excellent candidates. I think that both candidates, um, I appreciated them coming two nights in a row uh, because I think that the one night is kind of an introductory, the second day is an opportunity. I uh, particularly enjoyed walking in and seeing them meet with employees because I think that's critical. They're the ones that are gonna be working with. A little bit disappointed we didn't have more residents, but we did have residents from last night um, and they were, very verbal with their comments. So um, I appreciated all that. And council, I appreciated the deliberation today. I think it was um, a, a great experience to be able to share our opinions and um, tell why we liked one question or another. It was really good. And so Mr. Albright, it seems like it falls back on you to help negotiate that contract. We'll be honest. So I, I appreciate everybody. And um, I will entertain a motion for adjournment so we can go to one more meeting. <laughs> so moved. Support. Please call the roll. Board Member DeMonico? Yes. Board Member Lacido? Yes. Board Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And Board Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Meeting is adjourned at 545. Yeah.